All right, guys, Nick Drosos, and welcome to another episode of The Warrior Mindset. And this week, I have a very special guest. Um, I, I found her by fluke through Tim, who spoke to me about, about you. And uh, as soon as I heard her story, I had to reach out to her. I had to talk to her, meet her, do a podcast with her. And guys, make sure to listen to the whole podcast and stay all the way till the end, because this is going to be a very interesting story. And if you're watching this and we're starting off, um, we're going to need your help at the end of all this. So <clears throat> Kelly, um, tell people a little bit about who you are. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Um, first of all, thank you so much for having me on your podcast. Uh, when Tim said that he had talked to you um, and that you would maybe want to be involved with what we're doing. I thought he was joking because I had seen your videos years ago and I love what you do. So truly it's an honor um, to be sitting here. Um, so my name is Kelly. People call me Kelly Kelly. And um, I was a missionary in 2016 in Eastern Congo, which is the rape capital of the world and a war zone. So um, I wore many hats there, but one thing I did was I taught self-defense to the women, um, and that kind of happened as, um, I wouldn't say a fluke, but kind of something like that, because I had been learning self-defense for myself for two years prior, um, because I knew I was going to be a missionary, and I had traveled the world, and I just wanted to know how to defend myself. I did not know that I was going to be going to the rape capital of the world, and that I would be asked to teach the women and the men as well, because did, there did was you, such... Did you, did you know before you got there all this, or no? Did you find out that that was the rape capital of the world once you were there, or once no, you started I, teaching? No, I knew mm -hmm. before I got there, and that's why I thought... Um, gosh, like I, there are plenty of people that are way more ca capable than me. And I feel like this is a, is this a joke that I would be teaching this, but at the same time, there was no one else. Mm -hmm. So I thought I'll teach you what I know and what you, what I don't know. I'll, we'll learn together. And, wow. and so I would watch like your videos, other people's wow. videos. I would see, I, I would try to research machete self-defense because they would always ask, how do you get away from a machete? And I thought, gosh, it, it, I have no idea. It, it's interesting because I, I was training the police force uh, this week and um, one of the, 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 we were looking edged weapons and one of them was the machete and wow. you're with like trained fighters and like, you know, police officers and it was it's such a hard weapon to defend against and I could imagine trying to teach it to someone who doesn't even have a basic knowledge of self-defense truly. truly and there they have they'll so I was in Goma which is eastern Congo and that's really where the epicenter is so when you think about the Rwandan genocide it didn't end it just moved over into eastern congo and it's been going this whole time um and so what's in, in, really until, until today it's still the same yeah wow. and so really what's going on is a lot of um rebel um <clears throat> rebel armies at uh, one of my best friends there he was kidnapped as a child and forced to be a part of a uh, rebel army m23 and then traded back and forth to fdlr rebel army and he was forced to kill people as a child and these rebel armies will rise up and they will try to try and protect their village and then they'll end up doing the same atrocities that the other ones did and it's really this fight for power because the the corruption from the top to the bottom is is so widespread even the military another one of my friends was killed, uh, not killed, I'm sorry, he was almost killed by a police officer because the police officer was trying to steal his mattress. And it was a mattress that was borrowed and he knew he wouldn't have money to give it back. So he was trying to protect it. And the police officer shot him and his friend, his friend died and he almost did. And so, so all this was all this was over a mattress, over a mattress. That's yeah. I know. And so I, that's why they asked me to teach the guards as well, because um, that you I mean, you don't know if it's the police or the military or people walking down the street. There's so much gang rape there. And so whether you're a male or a female, you live in constant fear. 
I was going to ask you, I mean, you're, you're not a big girl. You're not, <laughs> are you afraid? Were you afraid? Like, where do you get the courage to, to, to go and do this? Even as a male and someone who teaches self-defense, I just, I would picture myself going there and I'd probably be in code red, full alert. For and sure. Where, where, where do you get that, that courage and the drive? And, and are you afraid? Aren't you afraid? I am um, to a certain extent. I um, so I have experienced various forms of abuse in my life, and I remember thinking, um, I remember feeling really alone as a child, and I remember feeling like, won't someone just come into this nightmare and um, and sit with me in it at least? Um, if they can't get me out of it. And so I think that's the, the mentality that I take when I go into high conflict zones or war zones. And I, um, I think I, I can't get you out of it. And I, and that's not my goal to get you out of it. I want to help you change your own country from the inside out. But I, I don't want you to feel like you're alone because you're not. I think that could be, even as we're seeing in, in coronavirus, like the I think the biggest thing that we're feeling, um, that a lot of people are feeling, are, is just loneliness, is that separation. And that when you go through pain and you feel alone. It's such a compacting feeling. So I think that's what drives me for sure um, is thinking, well, I know what's going on in these countries and I've had part of parts of these things happen myself. And so I, I can't live in a world where I look the other way. And I think that there are so many amazing things that people are fighting for in this world. And this is just my cross to bear. And so I think that if we all just do a little something, oh. it will all get better. That's amazing. That's uh, thank you. Well, uh, and and what's your overall? Do you have a, you know, when you think of like, is there an end goal, a mission? What would you like to to get from doing this? What is it, what is the overall plan? Yeah. So I started a nonprofit called the Graceful Warrior Project. Um, and I'll tell you a little background on the name. Um, someone that was very close to me, he had given my brothers and I a nickname and, and he would call us weak and worthless. And so when you, when you grow up in, in abuse, you have a foundation of shame and you look at the world through a lens of guilt. Um, Joyce Meyer said that, and I thought it was so profound because I related to it so much. And I, so I prayed all the time, God, would you help me to understand grace so I can understand it for myself and I can help other people wow. understand it. And I prayed that for years, God, would you make me a warrior for your grace? And one day um, I looked, I was reading names in the Bible and I felt like God was just <clears throat> encouraging me to to look up my name and Kelly is Irish for warrior and Anne wow. is Hebrew for grace. And wow. I, I know. So I just felt like, I felt like God was saying like, graceful warrior. Yeah. Like you already are a graceful warrior. That's who I made you to be. It doesn't matter what other people will say. Um, even if those people are very close to you. So that's what I named it. And, and that, that name is so like, um, multifaceted. And one of the things is that I, I don't want to come in like a bull in a China shop um, into country. And I don't want to create change that creates division. So we are focused on women, um, helping women in some of the most oppressive places in the world. But we want to do it in a way that includes men and that um, brings resolution and restoration. Um, I always talk about how, you know, I work with um, Maasai people in Tanzania and some of the stories that they tell you are, um, it just makes you want to rip your own hair out and just take all the women and run away and keep them safe. But if you had taken a Maasai man out as a child and you raised him somewhere else, he would not grow up thinking those things yeah. towards women. So, so really it's about education. It's about re-education yeah. and it's about, um, yeah, just integrating the two and letting them know you both carry such 
wonderful attributes. How can we be inclusive and care for each other? Um, so how we do that is uh, I like to go into a country and I will usually a church or an organization invites me in and I'll um, partner with them. They'll take me around to their village, their city, wherever they are. And I'll go into churches, into schools, um, to community centers, and I'll just teach self-defense. It's kind of like a gateway to get in because I think self-defense is like attractive. People are like, self-defense, cool, bring it in. Um, and then- do, do, so, uh, do they do any type of training before you come in? Have they done anything or- No. It, they, 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 don't, they don't know anything when you walk in there. Okay. Yeah, more often than not, they do not know a single thing. Um, and so I'll teach them some self-defense and we'll do things throughout the time that I'm there. Usually I, I can be, I travel a lot normally and so I can be there Usually when I'm setting up a leader, I like to be there for four to six weeks because I really want to get to know her. So usually it's like a phoenix rising, this person that just really acclimates to it. We have a lot of the same visions. And so then I say, I really like what you're doing. It's usually someone who's already doing something, but they have absolutely no resources, nothing. They're going home. They can't be their kids at night. And yet they're trying to constantly help other people. So my my hope is to say, hey, can we help you champion your vision for your community? Because you could do it way better than I could do it. I want to give you resources. Mm -hmm. I want to give you a platform. And we've created different things like curriculums to help give them fill in the gaps if they would like them. Um, and so she'll start a, a group of her own of girls in her wow. community. And she will meet with them weekly. And they will go over a Christian curriculum because a lot of these places, they're already Christian, but uh, there have been a lot of times you could have the Bible used to oppress women, uh, misinterpreted in different mm. ways. And if you think... It's one thing to think that maybe your community thinks that you're a second class citizen or that you shouldn't go to school or you don't have any of these rights, but it's another thing altogether to think that you were created to be less than. So we need them to know, hey, this is what God really says about you. And then we go on and we teach them um, so, uh, physical self-defense. And it's a real basic um, you know, maybe like 12 or 14 um, steps and they're not fancy. I think a lot of people, and maybe you have the same problem as people come in and they want to look like Bruce Lee or yeah. something like that. And it's like, no, you want the most basic thing, especially if you're not going to a jujitsu gym or a Krav Maga gym on a daily basis. If you're in the middle of a jungle and you're not getting practice all the time, stick to the basics, you mm. know? And so we'll do, th so then she'll meet with them once a week and they'll go over that curriculum and then the self-defense curriculum and every time they come in they will learn they will go over the moves that they know so it becomes muscle memory it just becomes mm. absolutely automatic and then they will learn a new move and I got to see how cool that was when I was in Tanzania we had started off with a group of girls in the jungle at the base of Mount Kilimanjaro and they were incredible and they're like sisters to me now and then when we went into the Maasai village and these women Nema and I went there who's our chief in Tanzania we went there just to teach self-defense these women I mean they're gorgeous shaved heads all the beads and they're just doing their dances we're in the middle of this desert it was incredible wow. Wow. and they the met they had to ask the men their husbands permission to be there and they weren't allowed to wear pants so we could their husbands won't allow them to wear pants so we couldn't do any of the, the rape moves anti-rape moves so uh I showed name on the ground I said just just remember this and um so if you could just even get it in your head to know that there's an option for you, that alone will give you hope. Yeah. And so Nama, afterwards we were, we were, had finished and all the women were gathering up and we were like, I was like, Nama, what, what are they doing? And she comes back over and she says, four of them want to become leaders for the Graceful Warrior Project. So the next day I I paid for them to travel all the way. It's a day's trip back to Nama's house in the jungle and the college girls the girls that we had been teaching and the Maasai girls 
learn together. And the college girls were teaching them. I walked in and all of the, each girl had taken a fellow girl and was teaching them. And I just was exploding with joy wow. because I thought this is really working. And that's the whole point is that we want leaders to create leaders to create leaders. And so then we also work with intellectual self-defense. So for example, sending girls to school, we have just rescued, wow. um, We've rescued four or five, and we're in the process of rescuing three more from a uh, three more from a Maasai village, because as COVID. Um, when you the, say Maasai village, so what does that mean exactly for the listeners? And I, I, yeah, know. sorry, um, Maasai. It's a tribe. Um, yeah. that is not just in Tanzania. They are um, all over parts of Africa and they have a beautiful culture. I absolutely love going to visit them, but just like any culture, including my own, there are um, some parts about it that are harmful mm. for some of the people, the, uh, this being the women. So they do female genital mutilation and they, um, which is where, they sorry, and this might be too much information, but they remove externally um, the female genitalia, and so they believe that this will keep them from cheating. How, um, how, how old do they do that? I've heard of it. I don't like. How, how old do they normally do that? One of the women that we had come back to the jungle that wanted to be a leader, she had it done when she was three days old. So that could uh, kill someone, obviously, especially a little baby. Three days. Yeah three days old and she had burn marks all over her legs because before they were married, she, before she was married off, they wanted to make sure that she was going to be a strong wife. So they burned her with um, tools from the fire. And then she, I asked her, I cause they believe in, um, uh, I, I don't know why I'm blanking on the word right now. They have many wives. And so I said, do you like that your husband has a lot of wives? And she said, oh, yes. Yes, because that means less time for me because sex is very painful and they can be very violent in sex. Also, if they um, if they even disagree with their husband a little bit, um, he is societally approved, like in um, – like endorsed even to, he can take her out, strip her naked, tie her to a tree and him and his friends can uh, whip her and beat her. And so, and I said, do they ever say sorry? And they said, no, Maasai men don't say sorry. And that's just their village in this specific village in Tanzania and this Maasai village. Um, and so if different Maasai villages, I don't want to paint with a broad stroke. Yeah. I'm just speaking of this one um Account, and, 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 I ha and I have to say something. I think it's interesting what you're doing that uh, you're not going in there to change the culture. You're not going in there to remove right. or your approach is, I think, a very uh, different one than we're used to hearing when, when, when other people try to change. I believe cultures can only change from inside with some exactly. education with a little bit of integrity and like like you know putting in some some change at a slow pace and then you know planting, planting some seeds and then it could grow on its own but to go in there and trying to change and as i think as crazy it might might sound to me what i'm hearing and be like and it, to me it's like unbelievable when i hear that uh, it's still part of their culture and their society right. it's hard for us to look at it from the outside and and exactly. judge. I mean that. I, I mean that's where the difficult part really does have. You know, does exactly. happen. Exactly. I had a friend of mine who who is from Kenya, and he told he was explaining how when he got circumcised, and this is a, a different context because he's male, and there was a different motivation behind it. But he was saying he got circumcised. I believe he said at thirteen, and he said that it was a sense of pride for him because um, the he was now able to sit at the table, the family discussions for and talk about finance. Finances. I mean, it was like a step up into adulthood. And so how he explained was that we don't want to go in and just say, what you're doing is bad, right. you bad, you know, yeah. there's an energy going and, and I think very much so this can be um, said of self-defense of martial arts is that there's an energy you don't want to stop the energy you want to redirect it. And point. so, um, 
So saying we love all of these things about your culture. How can we, how can we keep what you're trying to do in a sense, um, the healthy parts about it, but do it in a way that doesn't cause harm. Good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I think, I think, I think that's an interesting way because obviously it's been proven that to go in and change a culture just doesn't work. And right. at the end, you're going to find so much resistance that you won't achieve anything, even the right. littlest, even the littlest good that you could do. So right. I think, I think, I think that's, um, I think that's probably the best approach and very, I believe you have to be very intuitive, mm. very aware, very conscious, and very open to be able to do this because it's 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 not an easy thing when you're seeing this or listening to it, but yet you still have to follow within the frame and try to say, okay, how can I change this at a very slow pace and find some way to try to make whatever they have good, try to make whatever's exactly. bad, like maybe try to change it. But exactly. it's probably been generations like that. Is that's how it oh, is? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it's not just in Africa. And um, so I think you're, you hit the nail on the head. I think especially for Westerners, we are very used to kind of a microwave culture where we're, we're ready to have things when we want them. And this is, this is a really good thing to want really quickly. But if we're being realistic, yeah. we have to be able to be in for the long haul. And so we just rescued a, a, a quite a few girls from the Maasai village. And that's not something that I'm for necessarily um, because that's a short-term fix, but sometimes you need a short-term fix while you're working on the long-term goal, which is long-term goal is to, is to help women feel empowered um, in a way that doesn't cause division in their own community in a way where we're bringing men on board who are endorsing this and um and it's not to say you know i can just see like people saying like we don't need to wait for their permission i know but this is a very delicate issue yeah. we're talking about and we really want we really want this to be in a smooth way as possible where they're where they're learning and they're growing and they're changing as well as we are mm -hmm. so but we had to get some of these girls out quickly it was actually the maasai pastor who was um sneaking them out like getting them out as soon as possible uh because of covid the quarantine they their family was desperate for for money for resources and so um they are which means that the girls would have to have if they haven't already they would have been um like emergency female generally mutilated and then um sold uh, and as and one girl we got a video of she was crying she was orphaned and um she i believe it's the same girl might have been a diff one of the other girls but they were going to, she was going to be married off as a child bride. And the other one, um, if it wasn't her, her father died and she, um, so because there was no man to protect the house, the men from the village were coming in and they were raping her and her mother. And so we had to get them out of there and she's pregnant now. We just found out. Um, but we are, um, this is where intellectual self-defense becomes um, a self-defense in and of itself because if we get the girls into school by law the government protects them from ha they have more of a say against uh, female genital mutilation and child marriages so it becomes in and of itself a form of self-defense so we work on getting girls into school and then um, economic self-defense we want to make them more um, able to provide for themselves, for their families. We start our chief off with a, a, a sustainability project of her own so that she can um, generate money for her group and that she could take home money for herself so that they're not just, you know, we don't, we don't think it's really empowering if they have to come for us every time they need something. Mm -hmm. I want to empower you completely so that you are leading your group in your way, in your country. Wow. So um, one of the, we've done a lot of little sustainability projects um, and we send 
food over a lot, um, but the biggest one we've just worked on is we just bought land in Tanzania. Um, and so we're going to make this land fully self-sustaining. And we're wow. I'm like so excited about this. Wow. So we bought five acres and uh, 2.5 acres is going to be used for agriculture, cultivating the land so that they have all the food that they need to run the safe house that we're going to build to, to protect the girls. And um, we also are going to have animals on it. So whatever isn't used as far as um, the pigs, the cows, the chickens, the goats, the corn, the bean, whatever it is, banana trees, all those things, they'll be able to sell for money in the market. But the house will be all paid off. We're right now in the process of um, sending money over to build a wall around 2.5 of the acres so that the girls are safe and we're going to have guards in there. Um, and then we are going to build this next process after the wall is building the safe house. Um, and then we'd like to build another additional house as well so that when people come to help, they can live on the land with the girls um, and they get to experience life with them. So we're very, wow. very excited. And then this is another cool idea. Um, so they have these things called moto taxis and you see it a lot in Asia and Africa. And, um, so a lot of times that's actually becomes a vehicle for, um, sexual harassment or abuse because they'll pick a girl up. She'll pay to, to get a transport somewhere and he might stop somewhere and, um, rape her, try to rape her, sexually uh, harass her, any of those things. It, it, it freaks me out when I hear this. I know. I'm sorry. It's a no, lot it, just, it, it just freaks me out when I hear that there's people out there. I know. Who just do that. I know. It, may, it, it makes me like... Sorry, it just it makes me so mad to know that sometimes our human race, and I don't care your gender, religion, when I hear that we do these type of things to our own selves, our own people, species, it just it it it, it like it makes me so angry and I mean, you're you're talking it because you've lived it, and I can't I haven't even lived it. I'm just hearing you, and it's just striking so many nerves inside me. So I'm sorry about that. Just it just. No, I'm. I appreciate your very, very real reaction. I wish that more people, and I think that more people would react that way if they knew. Um, so I'm, I'm so grateful for this opportunity to be able to make more people aware. Well, I. I I really, you know, and we spoke about it very little. I really want to be <clears throat> part of your foundation. Thank you. I want to promote your foundation. I want to help you raise money for your foundation. Because um, <clears throat> it's hard, I'm sure, just on you alone. I know you have a small team. I don't know how many you are, but I definitely want to be part of it. Thank um, you. Like I said as well, um, I would like to give a percentage of my sales of my membership site yearly to your foundation. You are amazing, and, and, truly. Uh, I mean, we'll, we'll talk about that later, but um, I, I definitely... I have goosebumps. <laughs> I, I, you know what? It, it, it's Kelly, you know what? It's funny because I believe in the laws of attraction. I believe, I do believe in God, not the way religion teaches it to a certain extent, but I do believe there's a higher power. Mm. And I want to do, you know, I do believe I have this gift to teach mm. self-defense. And, and do. there's moments I almost, I, I was feeling like maybe it was time I stopped doing it. But then I see what impact I do have when I help people. I, I, want, to, I, I want to do something mm. you know, with my side. I want to help people. I want to give back. I didn't know if it was going to be anti-bullying. And, and then Tim came into my life, just mentioned what you were doing. And I think that I, I'm, I'm a very committed and, and I give my word to you and all the viewers that are watching this video because I'm not just all talk, but I definitely want to be part of what you're doing. I want to help you Thank raise you. money, create awareness and uh, help you through this journey because I think that you are a true warrior. And what I, what I respect about you, and I just met you now, um, might sound weird and this is, you know, guys, this is a podcast and I'm just being, you know, it's probably, I'm telling you like what I see from you is that you're actually authentic. You're Thank not you. doing it for the medals. You're not doing it for the money. You're not doing it for people to tell you, wow, you're so great and you're so nice. I could feel you actually do it for the right intentions and that you care. So uh, anybody who's watching this video, I do hope 
that they will donate. We'll put a link in the comment box that they can follow you, watch you. Um, <clears throat> as soon as this COVID is over, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do a seminar, a women's self-defense seminar, and all the money that I'm going to make, I'm going to send it to you. Stop. Uh, yeah, I, 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 look, I did, it for, I did it for somebody else who was going to Haiti to raise money. So he asked me, Nick, would you do a seminar? Of course, I believe that we have to give back. We have thank to. And, you I know, can't say thank you enough. I, I, tell, I tell people, it's like, how much can I take in? How much do I need? I live a simple life and whatever... You know, I have, but I have everything that I need. And sometimes we forget how grateful we should be when we complain about stuff that don't really matter when we have, we hear stories like this around the world that are real and we forget that. So your story inspired me. You inspire me as a person. I, you know, your, your authenticity and, and, and everything that you're doing, you are truly, I'm not just saying that, you are truly a graceful warrior. Like I mean that so Thank you. thank you. Thank you so much for this. And I think, I really believe, Kelly, more people need to see you and more, more people need to hear you. I really, you told me it was your first podcast. I can't believe it because you're an amazing, <laughs> you're an amazing yeah. speaker. Thank you. You know, you, 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 you put everything well together and you're real. And that's something thank that's you. hard to find. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to be working with you and uh hopefully uh, hopefully i'll be able to get some some people i know on board as well who do have contacts and and we could help you raise money because at the end you know we have to be honest it takes money for all this right yeah and if we want but surprisingly little to make a lot of big stuff happen but yeah and and that's again so what is just 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 to give an idea because i don't know is it five thousand ten thousand fifty what does it cost to build a wall? So the saying? wall, so we just paid, we just mm-hmm. bought uh, five acres of land in Tanzania, a beautiful place with a stream and um, uh, banana trees, all these beautiful trees. Um, we bought it for 12,000, it was 12,500. Now to build a wall, uh, because we're not looking for like a chain link fence because mm-hmm. we want it to be really secure for the girls. We're going to build an actual wall around 2.5 acres. That's going to be about $6,000. And then the safe house is going to be about 15,000. Wow. And so I always tell people, We don't need to have, I mean, it's great if someone can afford giving a large donation, but I would rather have an army of people helping an army of people with, if you can do $5 a month, $10 a month, we love that. We need to grow our team and it's only that together that we'll get through this and that we'll make a real change. So I don't want people to think that anything is too small. We see your heart and we thank you from the bottom of our hearts for it. I think it's amazing. So, uh, Thank you for coming Thank on you. the show, and uh, I look Thank forward you. to working with you. Uh, if you're if you're watching this video, please go visit our website, leave a donation, follow on Instagram, and I will definitely. Um, I'm, we're definitely going to be doing a lot more of these, so we can keep people updated to what we're doing. Awesome, and that people could you know remember to help and uh, make sure to like share the video and check out the graceful warrior the true the true strength of a warrior is through love and peace and and yeah. kind and integrity that's really what it is so thank, thank you again you. kelly thank you so much nick have a great day thanks